uh, I've felt for some time that China's part of the problem, not the solution. I think they made some tactical adjustments leaning on North Korea, which has led them to at least maybe get in talks with the South Koreans as a c current logjam on that, and to back off some of their bellicosity, uh, because they are frustrated with North Korea and it's hurting some of China's own interests. I think it's a tactical shift, not a fundamental one. They're still too worried about instability, the regime collapse, the unified Korea on their border with American troops. And I don't think this apt to be a strategic shift. They're a safety net for North Korea, and they let the pressure off North Korea. On cyber warfare, the conventionalism, again, is the other way around, namely that no progress was made. Uh, I wouldn't rule out future progress in this. It is difficult extremely complex, so we don't have time to go into it now, but including the source of problems. Uh, and I can distinguish between what we're doing, what the Chinese are doing, the question and answer session. It, it, it's totally different, uh, and we're totally different societies, and Mr. Snowden sitting in Hong Kong is a traitor. And he's not only hurting our national security and terrorism, he's hurting our ability to oppress China, which is going to use this as propaganda to cloud over the issues of who's doing what to whom. Maritime disputes uh, presumably came up, and again, I'll short change, just like uh, Don had to do because of rules of time, but there's two kinds of problems. There's the bilateral ones we have with the Chinese, particularly whether we can operate in the 200-mile economic zone, which international law says we can, and China doesn't like that. The good news is that Chinese patrolling is taking place now in our economic zone, and maybe that means we can uh, lower the tensions uh, on this issue. The other one is the one Don mentioned, the East and South uh, China Seas. Here, I think it's worrisome that the Chinese, are not only the Chinese are being aggressive, that Xi has been in charge of this policy for a couple of years, even before he became president. And it fits with his general nationalistic uh, bent, it seems to me. So I'm very concerned about an accident drawing us into a conflict there. We have treaty uh, commitments, of course, with Japan uh, and the Philippines. Taiwan. The good news is that it probably wasn't talked much about the meeting, whereas in the past, as Don has said, this would be a major issue. It shows it's in pretty good shape. The Chinese have spun this to their audience that they were tough on arms sales, uh, even as they were tough on maritime disputes, but you would expect that kind of spin. Economics, we should touch on. The cyber has become a huge issue. I'm glad Obama was able to lay out concrete evidence. Uh, of, of the cyber dimension, which is a major one now. Other aspects are equally concerning, including intellectual property theft in general uh, and so on. But there's some positive signs we can get into, and we should encourage Chinese foreign investment and relax some of our export controls and technology uh, consistent with transparency and security. Let me conclude by saying one issue that was barely addressed, if at all, was human rights and democracy. This is a glaring omission. It's been so for four and a half years under Obama. Uh, <clears throat> just as the summit ended, the Chinese sentenced to 11 years, the Nobel Prize winner's brother-in-law, uh, having kept him in jail for 11 years, not to mention his wife under house arrest. This is just a, a symbol of, of the increasing repression taking place, and she uh, shows no signs of political reform, indeed is cracking down harder. He's even praising Mao and railing against Western values. So this is a concern because this can't dominate our agenda with China, but it can't be ignored like Obama's been ignoring it as far as I can see because it's in our national interest to have a more open China. We can't be arrogant. It's got to come from the Chinese, but it serves our security and other interests. Uh, it reflects our values and encourages Chinese reformers. It's in China's own self-interest. And so until this problem shows some progress, which I see no evidence of in coming years, there's going to be a ceiling in our relationship of how far it can go, and it will complicate all the concrete issues that I've discussed.